My friends, Bitcoin halving at our doorstep and no pump. What's wrong with this bull cycle? Did we get it wrong? Um, look, it's an interesting day today. One thing I can say, that the beauty about technical analysis, is we were bearish, 76. Tweeted and I also said to you guys, listen, we'll wait for 60K uh, for the time being. And at that stage, I also explained to you guys that when you sell, especially when you're on weekly, daily time frames, you don't buy back tomorrow when the first candle retraces, thinking that that's the dip. The dip plays out over a bigger time frame. And this is now two months later. And where we are at this stage is Bitcoin is hovering to 60K. Now, this was the idea. The original idea was that we were going to go down to the buy zone, go to the resistance area where we shorted, and then go down even lower. But as of such, I didn't get this quite right. So we went down a little bit higher. So we bounced around 63, still went to that area, and now we're in this buy zone. So today we need to take this information a little bit further. And I want to show you how you can use these tools that I'm going to sh share with you to identify whether you need to be buying an altcoin or not, whether you need to be holding on and waiting for more discount. So this, the alt analysis, Bitcoin analysis, and some legacy market analysis as well um, in today's stream. So guys, you know what to do. Do your hodl bags a favor and subscribe today. Double down, hit that like and notification icon, and let's get charting. So let's get charting, guys. So before we're going to look at the BTC technical analysis chart, we under, need to understand where we sit in the big picture, where we're within this market. Remember, we know that when the Fed pivots, meaning the interest rates change and the, the U.S. economy turns from a, a tightening monetary policy where they raise the interest rates to a loose monetary policy where they start reducing the interest rates that's when the market has its last little bit of a hurrah big rally you can see in red and it's followed by a recession which is in the gray bars now for each and every time that we got to this pivotal point where the fed started keeping the rates flat after it got raised for a, a you know an extended period of time the market had a little bit of a rally afterwards as these bullish narratives start turning in that the worst is over. And it's only at that stage when the real recession kicks in. Now, guys, it might be that this instance doesn't play out the same way. Why? Well, simple. Jerome Powell is trying to obtain a soft landing, and maybe they managed to engineer something different this time around. So what do we do? Where do we look? What do we look at? We look at the Dixie. So the Dixie at this stage is breaking to the upside. And almost identical to, and uh, let's say, an identical fractal to when we shorted BTC. The Dixie is basically in a similar area. So meaning, what was the reason why we wanted to be bearish for Bitcoin at these levels? Well, we had a higher high. We had a lower high closing price-wise in comparison, and we broke trend. So the hope is when we look at the Dixie now and we zoom out, Trend is already broken long ago, but that area between the two divergence pivots, meaning from there to there, or in this case, from there to there, means that price can rally. Let's just mark it out quickly. Price can rally anywhere between these points. And this was the highest probable zone that I marked out before we turn and continue on in our trend. Now, it's just worth noting that this is obviously not a guarantee. If this happens, we can go back down and bounce on this red line again and break to the upside. And this might be the only bull cycle we get. We, 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 we have to treat the future as an unknown, and it's we can only look at the most probable play. But I think you guys get the idea where we're at. So let's quickly have a look at your comments. And then we're going to dissect this chart a little bit further because yesterday I explained to you guys Probably going to see the upside, which was we had a nice blue candle up to that point. And I said that there was a hidden CME gap at the bottom. So expect short term downwards pressure for price to go and fill the CME gap. And this is what's basically happening at the moment. OK, so hello, Terry. 
Uh, Terry says he's going to be buying the dip. He's throwing out a triple nine there, guys. Are you going to be buying the dip? Let me know in the comments. Even if you're on the Twitter page, um, let me know um, by throwing a triple nine my way. I'll take a saying good afternoon to each and every one of you guys. So uh, good afternoon to you. And Batali, happy to have you here. I see jockeys in the house as always. And Stefan, Mr. Subscriber number one. Peter, you a subscriber number Two. Peter was point up your finger there. There's Peter. Subscriber <laughs> number two. <laughs> okay, so so um, so that's that's yeah. It's a it, it made for an interesting history getting to where we're at now. So uh, right, let's let's have a look at this, guys. I want you to keep things simple before we move on. This is important. Um, why? If we're bearish at the top and we're bullish at the bottom, we get to be wrong once. Okay, so let's say the demand fails and we're wrong. Yes, then things are going to go down. But if you look at the macro view of what we have, this trend is still intact. So Bitcoin from January 2024 has not broken any significant trends. It's testing a lower range. Yes, there was a lot of selling pressure within this area. And if we were to zoom out even further back, one can argue that there's a lot more of these bullish rays in our way. So let's say we lose this specific level and we're wrong. We're bullish at the bottom and we fail. That's where we're going to pick things up again. Now, if we bring in the RSI for Bitcoin, there's still hope because what do we have? There's a pivot and let's mark out that pivot at the bottom. And, and I just want to use this exercise quickly just to help navigate with your sentiment. And that price is very high above that. But the RSI is almost at that point. So it's fair to assume that if this happens, say shit hits the fan and we do go lower, we will have yet again another hidden bullish divergence where price has not made a lower yo low yet. It's hidden because people think of it as bearish. And it's horrible looking and 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 and, but the oscillator is giving you the clue. There's some special money buying behind that. Okay, so remember that. Okay, so now let's take a deep breath back and say, well, we understand that now. We understand that we've got this hidden uh, this hidden CME gap that was produced over the weekend as the dump started Friday afternoon, and it continued all the way through to Sunday, and uh, we only opened on Monday at around 63. So. There's an entire gap all the way down to even as low as 59. Now, the CME has got a little bit of a different price barrier built into it. So, yes, we can go and test these areas. But this then also means that if we look at price on the daily, what is the secret? What's tip number one that I want to share with you so that you can go and apply this on your alts yourself? Okay. What do I want to share with you? We're going to go to BTC, BTC chart. But I'm going to hit this on the weekly time frame, and I'm going to say to yourself, look at this RSI. Let's bring the RSI in. RSI is our buddy. And what did we learn from divergences up till now? Okay. We can look at this one as a really good example. Higher high in price, lower high in the RSI. So what's the critical one thing that needs to happen in order for us to really take a divergence serious? Well, we can use that. That's the highest point on the RSI. Once price falls below that pivot, that's when shit really becomes bearish. That's when we worry. Open and close a candle below that. So from the weekly time frame, we don't even have divergence at the moment yet. There's a small candle on candle divergence, which prompted the reason why I said expect price to go to 60. But we've fallen below that within this entire trend. Okay, so, but if we look at the entire weekly time frame, what have we not done? We've not created a wave on wave, strong bearish, which in this instance was a strong bullish divergence that turns the trend around. We merely have a candle on candle divergence. Okay, so yes, and we're still above the 23.6, so we're still on track, so it is a buy the dip season scenario. Yes, now what happens if we go to daily time frame, and we look at this from the daily point of view, there's the pivot, 
there is price falling below that. But now when we look at this from the other end of the spectrum, like I explained to you guys, there's a pivot and all this is by the dip opportunities. Now, yes, given at this stage, best bet is you don't know where this is going to bounce. So keep it simple. Let's get back to the simplicity of what this needs to be. Keep it simple. For now, your play is be bullish at the bottom, be bearish at the top, and screw the rest. Okay, Simple as that. It's treated us well. We planned for this, and now you're good to go. We're ready for this. Now, if we look at the liquidity on this stage, you can see that going down, there's not a lot of liquidity. So we shouldn't see these crazy spikes anymore. The market, the, the, those that were going long, they flushed out. The opposing side, the bears, at this stage are at a disadvantage. If price starts moving up, they're going to get flushed out, which means to the upside, the potential is that we could get these crazy spikes. Now, where do you want to avoid trading? If you're too scared to buy down here, it's fine. Nobody's forcing you to do anything. I'm just sharing what I'm doing in the end of the day. Knowing that there's still risk, I can get shit wrong, guys. I do. I've got many things wrong in, 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 in on this YouTube. I mean, there's a visual record of everything, a library on this. But this is the riskiest part of it all. Because this is where the market becomes random. Okay. And, oh, I'm writing like crazy. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. And randomness cannot be predicted. Chaos can be predicted, but randomness cannot be predicted. So now is the time to act. The sad reality is some people didn't sell when we, when we gave these sell signals, thinking that, yes, the momentum is still strong and it's going to go on. So it means that for you at this stage, you cannot be buying the bottom but you need to treat the bottom as if we fall below this, sell. Because then you know there's even bigger discounts coming your way. Which means Bitcoin might retrace another 20%. And it's at that stage where your altcoins, they then go ballistically low and maybe dump another 30 40% on you. And that's what you kind of need to wait for. Also, what do we have to kind of support that at the moment is the dominance. But there's an upside to this. The dominance is giving signs that maybe this last little spike was the big shakeout before the bull cycle. Now, what do I have to support that crazy theory? Well, all that I can say is from Bitcoin's inception to where it's at now, once we cross the previous all-time high and the halving, all-time high is the horizontal lines, halving is the vertical lines. Once we cross that, it's only at that stage when there's a real alt season. Now, what is an alt season? Alt season is when Bitcoin trends up and dominance does the opposite, meaning money is leaving the safety of the big daddy in crypto and looking for riskier places to invest. So if I line up these two charts, followed by those red lines, alt season happens after we cross all-time high and halving. We're only three days away from halving and we're fighting around the all-time high scenario. So it might be that Bitcoin is going to spend some time within this range, does do the halving, gives you an anticlimactic halving day, three days from now. Maybe rallies up to the middle point, chops around a little bit, goes to the upper end and only in August decides to go ballistic when it picks up this trend. Who, 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 how would we know? We need to treat it day by day. That's why we do these videos as regularly as almost daily for you guys. And then from that point onwards, the trend is your friend. And you keep it simple. It means that you say that it's going to last forever. It's going to stay that way until it doesn't. So what, what is it going to do? Only once we move into this area, that's when we're expecting alt season. And maybe we had our timing wrong because we thought that this is going to be a little bit earlier. But the dominance is still flashing very signals. So what needs to happen on the dominant side? We need to fall below this thou shall not cross line. So within the next few weeks, you need to look at this. And if you're trying to time a really good buy, the buy the bottom, buy the dip, it means buying when shit is scary, but don't buy being stupid about it. Meaning buy when there's blood on the streets, but wait for them to stop shooting first.
Okay, and that's what we're trying to do. So we're just trying to get these timing these timings done as perfectly as possible. Okay, if everybody's on the same page, calm before the tornado from Peter. Yes, that's really good. Um, Lumpy says he's bullish on Bitcoin, but he don't know, but he doesn't know if all the alts will recover. Well, I've given you a really good case study on the history and the trends of such. Now, technical analysis, Lumpy, and for the rest of you guys, and let's put it in perspective, is a risk management tool. It's not a prediction tool. We're just trying to define if I act today, if I buy the dip now, what's my risk? That's all we're trying to obtain here. And if you're trying to navigate your risk, think of this. What are you looking for? You're looking for an excuse to buy. You're looking for an excuse to take profit. Or you're looking for the excuse to say I was wrong. I need to get out. That's all we're trying to do here. And in order to get to either one of those three answers, we just need to measure the risk. Because if the risk is sufficient enough in our favor, I have an excuse to buy. Doesn't mean that I'm going to be right. If the gains are sufficiently enough in my favor and the risk tells me that it's very small that it's going to go on higher, what's my excuse? I've got an excuse to sell. And then when we have buy the dip again, the story just repeats itself. So, did Hong Kong ETF make changes in BTC? Well, I doubt this, but remember now, these major news events, what happened the last time when Bitcoin had its ETF? So, the chart that I'm going to go to is this chart. And I'm going to expand Bitcoin's price action. And what did we say? When we looked at this chart, there was this whole story that I built out for you. So, I'm going to try and see if I can find that set of stories. Otherwise, I'm going to just quickly mark it out. Explain to you guys that we had the upper end of the range, we had the bottom end of the range, and the narrative was that we had strong bullish divergence on the weekly time frame. This is now a monthly time frame. We had strong bullish divergence on the weekly time frame, meaning price was telling me that it does not want to continue on to the, to the low end. And it was around this point that news came out that BlackRock has an um, ap application for spot ETF for Bitcoin has been accepted. And that BlackRock has, in its entire existence, only had like one ETF not approved. And this spiraled the move. And when did we get our ETF? I think somewhere around here. Yeah, I can't remember the exact date. But price was already priced in. Well, it was in this choppy range. Price was choppy. It was, was, was right in there. Okay. So what happened? News headlines said it. Everybody said, well, now there's an ETF and nothing's happened. And we chopped, 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 chopped sideways, became boring, and then we rallied a little bit higher. And at that stage, we had to know that there's two, three months away from an ETH ETF, and China is trying to do the same, and so forth. So if you... Use that mindset, that question or that statement that you shared with me. And I just want to impart this into the back of your head. What does this candle or these candles on screen actually represent? It tells us what everybody's thinking the future of Bitcoin will be. Nobody's buying here if they didn't think it was going to be there. Nobody's selling here if they didn't think it was going to be there. That's what we're trying to do. That's what that's what we're all doing. So if we look at what's happening at this stage, there was people saying, well, the news means that Bitcoin's going to go ballistic. So everybody's buying to get in early. So when the news came, there was nothing to go ballistic anymore. The buyers bought. So if this is the case, and we're trying to look at the same divergence narrative, I'm not going to go to the monthly time frame. And we're saying that there's another wave coming and there's another push to the upside. Let's go to the monthly time frame and bring in that RSI again. What should price not do in order for us to remain bullish? Thou shall not cross line. There it is. So anything in this area has got that same principles as on the daily. As long as Bitcoin stays above this area, this divergence on the monthly is to be ignored. And anybody that's buying now is buying that 
there will be an ETF approved and it will go up higher and and and, and they're trying to front run themselves. And if we've just had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven big blue candles in a row, is it fair to assume that people looking to buy is going to say, okay, well, at least I expect that it needs to come back down a little bit in order for me to get in because I don't want to buy the top. You don't want to buy the top. Nobody wants to buy the top. And that's the fact that once we got to this level, price just kind of petered out. We just sat there or the, 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 the bullish narrative kind of just petered out. We just sat there, nothing to do. Now what? We've all bought. And uh, this is the discount that could potentially bring back the interest. So this is always really good. Okay. So here we are. Let's see what happens. So what do you do? Now I've given you a lot to think of and I see already there's comments popping in, but what about this? What about that? And this is where I'm going to say to you guys, I will, I, will, I will read through them as we go through the stream. But I just want to remind you guys, what should we do when the questions get even more complex and more complex? Put technical analysis in its place and keep things simple. What's our first job at hand? Be bullish at the bottom. Okay, there you have it. Right, let's quickly read through those comments. Um this one's about flux. Let's see what else we have. We've got a Solana. Um, let's see what else we've got. USDT dominance. Maybe we can look at that, James. That might might sit in nicely where we are. And then there's a question from Vitaly. Rudo, what about the triple bearish divergence on the monthly? Does this, does this mean we get a reversal and that this might be the last bull cycle? Well, you can argue that. It's a really good point, Vitaly, but if we look at this monthly candle and we look at the triple bearish divergence. So basically, this is the, the scenario that we're looking at. So we've got Bitcoin all the way here and we've got the RSI all the way there. And the argument is or the statement we, what you're trying to point out is high, lower high. Oops, stop bouncing around. Uh, high, lower high, lower high. High, higher high higher high okay so strong bearish divergence strong bearish divergence and in none of these instances what did we do that we cross the thou shall not cross line well in this instance it came close we were there for three weeks below it but we haven't done that yet so it's a tough question you can argue and say okay right if we go higher again look at where we are Okay, if we go higher again and we fall below 62, that might mean that we're going to do what? Go to 20, go to 4. But then also what we need to remember is that Bitcoin is not just, it, it's not just a chart. What is happening here is, this is not a reversal in the sense that the move is over. No, no divergence is that. It's just telling you that the amount of momentum that was heavily weighted in BTC's favor, how much gains did we make there? 44,000%. How much gains did we make here? 12,000%. How much did we make here? 1,500%. Okay. So how much gains can we expect now? Maybe 500%, 300%. It's telling me that it's maturing. And until we come back down to that red line, it's just going to be speculation. Either way, whether we're going to have a big correction or not. But then there's an interesting little thing that we can do. And this is the adoption curve. And uh, this is the tech adoption curve. And I'm just going to try and, oh, I've tried to type with my left hand there. It didn't really work. Let's see if I can get the right image. This is now, we're not going off topic and it's all your fault. Uh, we need to end this almost quickly. So this is what's happened here. Let me just open this in a new tab. Okay. So it's loading real quick. And I'm going to go through your comments while it's loading. Okay, so this is now an old chart, but think about this. An adoption curve means that the more and more people uses it, then at the end, there's no more insane gains in the tech. So 
the people that started with TVs when it was something new and developed and built their companies on that technology will experience insane gains as more users start using it. Okay, it's the same for airfare. And now we're getting a situation where it's not a hype thing anymore. Same for the telephone. Everybody's got a smartphone. Everybody's got a car. Everybody's got a PC. Everybody's got a mobile phone. I mean, and I insist that that line is up there as well. So the trickiest thing is, and the hardest thing to know at this stage is, does everybody have something to do with crypto? Everybody doing this? Everybody using it? The answer is no. So yes, it might mean that for Bitcoin, when institutional players are now getting in, that it means that we're either going to go through a scenario where we had a slow growth, which meant that awareness was created. Now institutions going to take over and really drive the thing up. And then at that stage, it's going to peter down once every Joe public and everything has got Bitcoin and it's 20 years from now and it's an average thing. Oh, you know, just like fiat or just like your cell phone. And that I don't know. The limit and the scale of that time, nobody of us can really, at the level of intellect that we are and the level of data we have, can clearly define to tell you that to an exact point. But it's something that still needs to play out. I think we all can agree on. Now, there's many of these charts that you can actually go and search that shows you where they speculate where BTC is in relation to this curve. And in most of them, it's at the half at best. Okay, so that means that there's still a lot of adoption. But when we go back to this chart, how much minutes? 26 minutes. I need to finish up. Um, when we look at this chart and we go here, I want to show you guys this. If you look at Bitcoin's total market cap or the total market cap in the crypto space, okay, and I'm going to switch on the logarithmic scale because I want to make sense of everything in a sense uh, to show you guys. When we had, this is our... Bitcoin at 20,000. This is Bitcoin at 70,000. Okay, 69,000. And this was Bitcoin somewhere here at 16, uh, at 3,000, 2,000. Okay, look at the amount of money in the market 6 billion, 400 billion. And when we got here at the previous all time high, when we crossed it, was the first time we had a trillion. Now it took Bitcoin at that stage, 10 years to get to a trillion, but it took it three months to get to two trillion. That's as the money starts getting it. It's a bigger beast, okay? It needs way more to go higher, but it also tells you that the growth that we experienced in that is equal to all the growth here. That's how small and how insignificant the, the entire previous history for Bitcoin was. Now, where we are now, the market cap from Microsoft, Tesla, or any of those massive blue chip top tier companies isn't $2 trillion. That's way more than that. So this entire space still needs to mature 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100 trillion. There's yet again studies out there. I don't, I don't have the numbers uh, that I can just quote off of heart yet. That shows where the space can go towards. But come on, that's not that's neither here nor there. It makes for an interesting chat. Okay. So let's, I see James is asking again, USDT dominance. <laughs> so let's do that real quick. And then I've got a few points that are a few, few things I want to show you guys. Um, so I, I'm not, I haven't read the second comment there, Peter. But what I will quickly do is just load the list so that we can get to the uh, dominance. And it's probably going to be, this market and there there we go usdt dominance so what do we have with the usdt dominance it basically shows you whether the amount of money versus everything else is in dollars whether it is deployed money sitting on the side or not so when money is being deployed okay the dominance is obviously going to change and move in the opposite direction so let's have a look at what we have here as more and more money gets printed I don't have that figure as well. There will be more money sitting in stable. But what we do, do what do we know? Okay. Once Bitcoin goes to all-time high scenarios, okay, and it starts trending up, the dominance is going to change in its favor and vice versa. So what do we have? Dominance is trending down. Why? Because people were buying, leaving stable and buying shit. That trend is still intact. 
Wouldn't you agree? So as long as this thing is trending down, the trend to the upside for us is still there. Okay? Less and less money in dom. So when we look at these levels here, this was lows. So what do we have now? Dominance trending down, the USDT dominance. Now, what do we have? We've got it oversold at a situation, but oversold doesn't mean anything because oversold means that we might have a scenario where we have divergence further on. Maybe we consolidate or maybe we just drop down further. I can't, I can't predict that as of yet. But what I can say is critical bounce areas. Yes, there's definitely some areas of resistance within the scenario. Why? Because we've got ranges within this area. And this was our previous bull cycle ranges. And we're at this stage bouncing on top of that. So expect a little bit of pressure. The same as for the Dixie. We're bouncing on support. Expect a little bit of pressure. Maybe the market front run itself. So everybody was too drunk on the fact that we had a spot ETF and halving means that we need to sell off a little bit. Stuff needs to go and sell for common sense to get back. Okay. So now let's have a look at this. Now, Renee, colossal crash at halving. Uh, 47K is in place. So sorry. Probably, probably not. The the reality is if you if you try and predict too many levels of support into the future. And, you know, I, I love it, the fact that you guys are conversating back with me, sending stuff in. I like to hear your thought. What I've just learned is if you're trying to look too far ahead of yourself, you're selling an expectation to yourself that I will only act then. What happened to Capo? He said, 14K, I'm not interested in anything else. We went to 16 and then to 70. He missed out. Now, you don't want to be doing that to your, to your own wallet because guess what? You might be right, Renee, but you might also be wrong. And the goal here is we don't want to be right or wrong. We want to be making money. So for the time being, try and take the most probable play and keep that in the back of the hand. Because I can pull out scenarios here that says Bitcoin's going to go to 4K, bearish, uber bearish waves. But, you know, the reality is that's not going to help any of us. And I'm just trying to help you guys. Yeah. Capo, Mr. You, the entire cycle, you refuse to buy. The guy had over 1.4 million followers. I think it's down to 700 now. And he's doubling down on it because he doesn't want to admit that he's wrong. I would rather say, I fucked up. Forgive me. But at the end of the day, I'm sharing my journey. I'm not giving financial advice. And if I'm wrong, it's my money that's wrong. But I will be right more often than I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> so there you have it. So let's, let's do this. Before we move on, guys, just a quick reminder, today's video is sponsored by Prime. Thank you, Prime, for making this available. Um, guys, there's a free trial and there's a promotion. I said to you guys, for everybody that opened a Prime account within the last 48, 24 hours and deposit 3,000 first-time deposit uh, dollars into that account, could claim access, six months access to my private group. Now, I'm not trying to sell. Very few people, hardly nobody actually, Pays to get access to this. Uh, the, the idea is I'm trying to make this in a situation where when we're in a completely public domain, scammers can read what you're doing, see what you're doing, and then DM you afterwards trying to replicate me. And actually, they catch people. They catch a lot of people. But scammers won't go through the effort of subscribing or getting sponsored access. So do that. Get into a safer space where we can work together and trade together and uh, and enjoy the ride. So that's a no-brainer in my opinion. Now, I saw Jockey ask a question a little bit earlier while we we're on this topic. I don't have – I've got all the accounts already and I'm – what's the, the option? Jockey, just go to the upgrade section and you can actually just click on it and it's going to ask you to sign in with your Discord bot, your Discord access, because it's going to just log into Discord again. And then it will show you all the various price bands. So if I open it up, it's going to open a tab. It's going to look something like this. Um, and then, yeah, now I need to show you guys what to do with the alts. We're 34 minutes in. So while that loads, well, we're on there. It's going to say, hi, chart artist, or in your instance, your name. Okay. And then it's going to give you the various pricing plans as well as the, the amount of dollars that that subscription costs. So there you have it. Simple as that. Okay over to the alts, my friends. Okay, so let's quickly see. Last little comments on this topic. The absurd says 47K, damn, I can see 54. Uh, let's see what else we had. I've, look, 
while we're on this, I think this is a this is a serious topic. While we're on this, Peter, forgive me for going longer. <laughs> let's see if Peter will forgive me. Um, because um, let, let, let's let's do this real quick. I'm gonna load this chart. Where's my demand, supply and demand raise? It's on. I did it on this chart here. Let's just quickly get this. Come, 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 come. There we go. Expand. This was the analysis that I shared with you guys. We slightly missed it. We there. Yes, 54, if this is the case. But before 54, there's a buy zone. If that buy zone holds, great. What if price, and I shared this in the market tactics yesterday, I think this one here. What if Bitcoin doesn't go our way? did a whole section on that and yes that's truly possible i mean there's there's reason for that to play i mean i looked at it at that stage and yes 47 what if that hole doesn't hold and we go there yes it's true let's see let's see let's see let's take it one step at a time okay um let's let's see what else second question is still pending how to spot stable alt because there are many there's nothing they want a stable alt my friend Go to a stable coin. You're looking for risk to give you opportunity to make money. There isn't anything stable in the market. It's the fact that it's the instability that draws us to this in order to make money. Now, if you talk about stable, meaning it's going to hold trend, yes, that's something I'm going to show you guys right now. And uh, trends get broken, broken. So you need to understand that. Yet again, you can analyze this to the T. I can tell you exactly how to look at the trend. But if the trend gets broken, it's broken. I mean, what's the story there? At least you know now it's broken. So you can define the risk. That's where technical analysis helps you. So we're going to start off with Ethereum real quick. And um, the original sell zone was there, and we had more sell zones up higher should the market continue on being bullish at some stage. Okay. So when was our last buy zone? The buy zone was there, and I explained to you guys that we're holding 23.6. This was the previous buy zone, so everybody's now on the same page. We know where we bought. We know where we sold. We know where we bought. We know where the worry was, and now we're at the 618 range. Now what? Okay, let's hit this through the day, the weekly time frame, because the weekly time frame is for you, for your hodlers. If you want to own it, I want to own the spot. I want to ride it, and I want to get out at some stage. That's the time frame. You don't even consider any other time frame, okay? So weekly time frame, what do you have? Okay. You can clearly see on the lines, that's the breakout, that's the high, and that's the low. So between this point and that point, Ethereum's got hidden bullish divergence, which basically is not giving you any, uh, you know, doesn't really make it easier for you because it means that you can carry risk all the way down and you should be able to carry risk all the way down with the hope that bull cycle is still there. We're going to go to 5,000, 7,000. I mean... Ethereum, in this instance, there was calls made by people saying $75,000 for an ETH, crazy stuff like that. Yes, what the future might bring, we don't know. So this is the reason you're still allowed to be bullish, because price can go lower. That RSI can still go lower, lower, lower still, as price is finding a reason to grow. But what we do know is the most highest probable bounce points in a trend when there's reversal is your 38.2 FIB retracement level and your 6.18 FIB retracement level. This is now for a trend continuation. Somewhere between that is called the golden ratio or the golden zone, and that's when new hopeful buyers will enter the market. Statistically speaking, or statistically speaking, is the highest probable bounce point. So what you need to do in any alt is to get back to what you were saying, you need to go and look at any alt and say to yourself, weekly time frame, look at this and look for this scenario. And while you're at it, just go and download this chart. It's a free public chart. You just type in divergence chart and you will actually see that thing pop up. I'm not trying to trick you into buying shit here. We, we, we're trying to help you guys on this channel, okay? As best I can without being financial advice, okay? And that's what you're trying to look for. We're trying to look for hidden bullish divergence because we want the trend to continue. We're still bullish at heart because Bitcoin's not given me a reason to be bearish. So as long as that's the case, hidden bullish divergence is what we're looking for, which means price should not make a lower low. 
So if you go back to this, when's the last wave bottom? There was the last wave bottom. What does price need to do? Not make a lower low. What does the RSI need to do? Make a lower low. Hidden bullish divergence. Okay. So to switch everything back on, this means if we then take that and say within the daily, there's no reason to say that this is bullish. I agree with you guys. So we can go probably 2,900 again, and we can even go a little bit lower to try and create what? Uh, with this pivot, a scenario where what? Price makes a lower low and the RSI doesn't, meaning we're going to go up there probably and then go lower down to create strong bullish divergence to end this downtrend that we currently have. But that's yet again as crazy as at this stage making a prediction that we're going to go to 16 because we don't we need to take it level by level by level for now the market can trick everybody and start rallying because we are at that point where bitcoin is far as filling the cme gap which what is which was what we expected it's filling it once it does that it's still in critical support level for more bull cycle move and then we can break up so you have it let's do it again let's do that same thing so you can go and do it on your own coins again can i look at solana weekly time frame let's have a look at solana weekly what do we have higher high lower high higher high in price okay so we've got typical textbook Strong bearish divergence. Price makes a higher high, oscillators going, the RSI is going in the opposite direction, and that's a reversal divergence. We gave you so take profit prices for Solana. Sell, 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 sell. It's, it's poised. It's poised for what? Poised for a retrace, a farming opportunity for you to have more. Okay, so now it's there. But now what is it doing? Okay, RSI is telling me we've got what? A low here. Let's switch this to the line to a low there. And we've got a higher high. So what do we have? Let's look at this chart again. Now we've got hidden bullish divergence. So yes, the dip has done what it's supposed to do. It's shaken everybody out of the market. I haven't opened this one today, but it's basically made everybody bearish. It's basically messed up everybody's dream of bull cycle. That's when you want to buy. It's buy the dip season, my friends. So most probable buy for Solana, 127. Mine was a little bit higher, but this was off the back that we were looking at that area as holding a support. But it still does not change the weekly scenario that we can, and we have to be bullish all the way down to that line. Once we fall below 87, yes, for the guy that bought the top, it means like this guy is crazy. This thing is nearly halved in value, and now you want to tell me it's bearish. But the technicals tells you that that is the risk you need to stomach if you want to be in Solana at the moment. So you need to understand that. And if you want a bigger picture or a tighter area, work on the daily, but then you understand that the shift in sentiment is going to change more often and you might be left out. So Peter is throwing me a bone saying, listen, Rudo, this is getting long. So this is the last one. I'm going to drill it in again. Sell zone. Let's go to the weekly time frame. What do we have? Price not falling below that level. RSI clearly ready for more. Okay, there you have it to do hidden bullish divergence. So as far as discount goes, this is as close as it can be. So what do you expect? Expect that 50% of the wick to give you a sweet spot buy. And at that stage, should we break this area, then this entire move then starts doing this. But there's no saying that there will be divergence, so we will have to wait and see before we give bearish targets. Hope that that helps. Guys, there's 600 of you guys giving, being live on the moment. If you found this helpful, do me a big favor. Share the video with a friend. Ask him to come and watch. Hit the button, hit the subscribe button, and so forth. And if you're watching on Twitter, retweet. Tell me something about the video. Give me some comments. Tell me what you've learned, whether it's helpful, and an and. There's JJ Doc telling you. Hit those likes. No reason not to do so. Guys, Peter, you can move the, the camera over. I think I'm done for today. Um, more alts. Everything does happen within the Discord. I'm, I'm going to extend that deal for one more day. So if you haven't taken advantage of it yet, you've got another day. Tomorrow, by the time we trade live, it's no it's no longer there. Um, that's, that's that for me. Guys, buy the dip. Understand why you're buying the dip. 
And remember as always, keep hustling, my friends. Cheers. Keep hustling. Subscribe now.